Anthony Burgess spoke of a clockwork orange as a metaphor for a human being who is no longer a human being. It's a mechanical, ugly, predictable device with the outward appearance of a beautiful and juicy fruit, which is a metaphor for what a human being would be were they to be deprived of their free will. Now, this is what happened to Alex, the protagonist of the book, A Clockwork Orange. His free will was taken from him, and he became a dependent and helpless shell of a human being, subject only to his programming and not to his own interests. All of his beneficent acts were robbed of what would have been their underlying meaning, which is sincere care about other people, which he finally discovers in the 21st chapter. You cannot know whether a clockwork orange or a machine cares about you or not. One can only assume that they don't. Now, a machine is an input-output device, but human beings are also input-output devices. Give one a stimulus and you'll get a response, just like a computer program. So what is it that differentiates between a human being and a machine that makes the care and love from a human meaningful, but from a machine hollow and meaningless and empty? A machine, like Alex, is a slave to another's interests. A human being, or at least a free human being, determines for themselves what their interests are and how to go about the whole pursuit of happiness business. The interest of a machine is meaningless because from it there is no acknowledgement of your value to them. From a human being, there is security in their interest because it comes from a person willingly going out of their way to choose you. It coincides with their interests to like you, and that means that you mean something to someone and not just the um, traits that other people can derive um, value from the way that a farmer pulls corn from his field. Now, of course, the issue is more complex than this. Evolutionary psychology and behavioral imprinting and other things like these muddy the waters and make the differentiation between a human being and a clockwork orange uh, less distinct than between a human being and an actual computer or a car or a gun or a bicycle. But while this continuum of humanity breaks the binary that Burgess speaks of, it doesn't break the qualitative diminishing of love, of social validation, and of passion that a mechanizing of humanity makes. So what are the things that mechanize human beings and turn us into clockwork oranges? Well, lots of things. But I'll list three things as examples, which are all really just different versions of the same thing. First, bureaucracies. Rules from your parents when you're a child are designed to assist you in making good decisions, ostensibly, that are genuinely for your own interests at a time when you don't have the experience and the wisdom to look out for your own. Now, parents cannot help but care for your best interests, and even if some parents are very bad at this, there's still a, a difference between the rules of a family or of a church or a small community um, whose interests require you to be a thinking, functional human being versus those of a very large community like a nation state or a school or a big company. In large groups of people, we don't have enough room in our hearts for everyone. And so the people who make the rules do so upon their own interests and their own interests are for others to be predictable for their actions to fall within foreseeable paths of contingencies, this is more secure for them. And so bureaucracies are designed to make your decisions like the paths on a flowchart. I can do A, or I can not do A. I can do B, or I can not do B. If I do A, then I can do either C or D. There is no room to choose sigma rather than A because this is inconvenient to the bureaucracy. It makes them nervous. It falls outside of their planning. Number two is programming. Programming is what the government did to Alex in A Clockwork Orange, and is what schools do with young children today when they educate them about national history or about kindness. And when they get older about immigration and about diversity and so on. Programming is when people use 
positive and negative associations to get other people to behave as they would like them to, rather than by convincing them through reason, or by argument, or by example. Programming was what Pavlov did with a bell to get dogs to salivate, and it's what teachers do with minorities to get students to salivate, and it's what executives do with dollars to get employees and shareholders to salivate, and it's what marketers do with created needs to get consumers to salivate, and so on. The programmed people, if they are still people, end up doing things and saying things that, if asked, they can't really explain. They don't know why they're doing them. They don't know why they're saying what they say or behaving as they behave or believing what they believe. They just do them. Number three is threats. Threats are less subtle than bureaucratic rules or behavioral engineering, but the goal is the same. Someone wants another person to do what they want for their interests rather than what other people want to do. Perhaps they're lazy, or perhaps there actually is no benefit to the other person. Um, and so explaining or arguing or simply letting the other person act as a free agent is inconvenient. So they say, do what I say, or I will do unpleasant things to you. It is a very simple way of attempting to remove choice from the equation. Now, of course, the threatened person can still choose to ignore the threat or even to threaten back, but usually there's such a difference in power that ignoring or fighting back is a vain or futile option. Now, Khaled Hosseini's protagonist in Kite Runner has a father who says that all crimes are really just variations of theft. Theft of life, theft of property, theft of sexual freedom, and so on. I think bureaucrats, human programmers, threateners, when they are different, though they usually aren't, are thieves too. They steal your free will, which is kind of like stealing your soul, but it's worse than that, because they're also stealing, by extension, your ability to love and to be loved. Real love is a choice. It's an expression. I value you. You mean something to me. But if your choice is taken away, if your will, if your interests are no longer part of the equation, how can you love someone else? And if you are merely a machine, a clockwork orange, how can someone else, how can another human being behaving like a free human being, how can they love you?